All right, we are going live now. Just make sure everybody can get in here. Hello, everybody. Uh, hope you had a great time at that last panel uh, with Maniac Pumpkin Carvers. Um, they're incredible. If you haven't gotten to their site, go check it out. It's stunning work, stunning artistry, and the perfect thing to get us in the mood for the rest of this Halloween day. I haven't slept, as you can tell, at all. Um, and neither is Misha, I think, because we are, we're just going full out here. And so to continue this spirit, we are going to do some really fun uh, makeup tutorials here for Halloween. We have Victoria. Victoria is, uh, was self-taught, but has, is a licensed esthetician and uh, makeup artist. She um, is an incredible, I mean, I don't know if you've checked out her social yet. We've linked that uh, in the list, uh, if you go check that out. But she has an extensive makeup history and uh, also has a YouTube channel uh, that she's just started offering makeup tutorials uh, called Brews Before Brows. There's some supernatural stuff over there, just saying. And uh, this is gonna be a lot of fun. I'm gonna bring Victoria in here so that <laughs> we can actually get this party started. Uh, I did this makeup myself, Victoria. I don't know if you that like it. it. It took me a long There's time. There's a little bit of believability loss there. <laughs> <laughs> well, just turn we're your so, head and it suddenly disappears. I know, it's, it's fine. Look, I'm fine. Um, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming. I'm, I'm going to get out of the yeah. way and let you do your thing. Um, <laughs> if, you, if everyone has any questions while we're going through it, please use the Q&A. Um, raise your hand if you are also actively going to attempt this uh, lovely thing that is going to be explained to you shortly. But raise your hand if you're uh, up for anything and you need some help or you have questions or, or whatnot while you're doing it along with Victoria. All right, Victoria, take it away. All right, thank you. Hi guys. Uh, this is gonna be really fun. Um, as you can see, I've decked it out for you guys. So happy Halloween. Um, I'm gonna do a little fun kind of skeletal look uh, that hopefully you have enough products in your everyday uh, kind of haul of things that you can follow along. Uh, so if you are, uh, please, you know, follow along with me and um, I'm going to be doing blending at certain points so I'm going to try to ask if you guys have questions like please feel free to like raise your hand and uh, come in on that so first thing I always do no matter what kind of makeup I'm doing I always like to do like a little bit of a skin prep so I have this uh, Denise Myrick's uh, beauty oil that I really love um, if you have like a primer or something you want to put on um, especially if you're going to be keeping this on for a little while I just do like a couple of drops in my hand and then just like press it into my skin. Um, I'm gonna be putting on a lot of layers. So this will help kind of protect my skin a little bit underneath it. Uh, so I start with that and then we're gonna put some foundation on. Um, I'm actually gonna clip my hair back a little bit because it always ends up getting in my makeup. Um, all right, so I have uh, this Charlotte Tilbury um, Airbrush Flawless Foundation that I love. Um, I just put like a little bit on my hand and then I use like a kind of packed in brush and apply it. Um, we're gonna be doing a lot of browns and blacks in this. So it does not matter if we have a bit of fallout. So I'm gonna go and put a nice layer of this. A big thing with foundation is you don't wanna put on too much when you first apply it. Sort of just put like a thin sheen layer and you can always build upon that. Um, if anybody has questions, <laughs> this is a good time, even though it's early on. I know a lot of people use um, the beauty blenders, the uh, sponges, which are pretty great for um, applying. They're also great for um, making sure you don't have too many streaks. But the big problem that I have with them is they eat a lot of your product. And so I end up feeling like I lose a lot more product in the brushes than I, I mean, in the uh, beauty blenders than I do in the brushes. Um, a big thing too is always blend down your neck a little bit so you don't have that line. I feel like I end up seeing that line a lot. Uh, you can go a little bit over your eyes, a little bit over your brows, and just make a nice base for us to make a character on top of. Okay, so now we're gonna highlight and create a little bit of a skeletal highlight. Uh, so I'm going to take a concealer. Uh, this one I've got uh, Josie Marin, Marin 
Vibrancy Concealer, um, but I'm gonna put this in a slightly different place than I would normally uh, because I'm gonna try to look a little skeletal. So I'm gonna create a little pointed chin. I'm gonna do this really wide, lower kind of cheekbone highlight. I'm gonna highlight my brows. We have someone here then, too who has a question, by the way, Victoria. Yeah, go for it. Becky, did you have a question? You know, I'm, I'm just excited to do this. It's been a while since I've done any monster makeup like this. Do you have any mm. tips to help it stay? I'm gonna do it a little bit later in the afternoon and then have it for the Halloween evening. Yeah, so a big thing for helping makeup stay is not just primer, but helping it set. So I'm actually going to be setting this so that it stays really still. So a big thing is always do all of your like creams, your uh, liquids, all of that stuff first and then you're gonna set it with a loose powder and that will really make sure that it stays and it will give it a lot more longevity. And then you're also awesome. gonna to wanna to use any kind of like um, setting spray helps as well. Uh, so you okay. see the highlight that I did is very different than I normally would do for like a beauty look because it looks a little strange on your face, but this is how we're gonna create it look almost like I have a negative space like a skeleton. But yeah, so um, primer for sure. Uh, just do a little bit of research on which one you like. Um, I have one from Laura Mar Mercier that I really like. Um, and then definitely set it. So I'm going to do cream contour. So I'm still not going to set it yet until I have all those creams and liquids done. And then I set it with that loose powder. Um, so next thing I'm going to be doing is that contour. So I'm going to go into this. This is Anastasia. They have a cream contour palette. If you have like, you know, like have like those contour sticks, those will work as well. But I say use a liquid or a cream for a look like this, especially because it's really going to make it, give it more definition and it will have more, um, you know, the powder will stick to it better. So you'll get the lines that you really want to get. So I'm kind of creating a little bit of this weird shadow so that my forehead kind of disappears as if I had a really skeletal kind of face. And then I'm also going to go into these temples here. And then I'm going to create this cheekbone. So this is like a big thing. You always start at the top of your ear, you make a line, and then you go underneath that bone there, and then you do a little turn. So you kind of create a little bit of that curve there. Uh, while I'm applying contour and blending, because this is going to be a bit of blending, if anybody else has questions, please feel free to ask. Because uh, this, this stuff you have to blend a little bit. Uh, you can kind of make like a, a fish face to kind of get the line where you want it to be. Like that. But I'm keeping them kind of further out because I'm going to be creating like the, lots of teeth because I'm going to do a little skeleton. I have a quick question. Yeah. Will this video be posted later? I'm currently doing work right now. So I don't have my products with me. Um, <laughs> I think so. I... Charlie, if you yep, answer yep. That, I think definitely so. gonna yeah. post this. Definitely gonna post it. Okay. Thank and then you. same with my chin. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I think so, but I'm not positive. Um, so I'm gonna create a shadow here uh, when I blend it, and then with also the powder colors. I'm also gonna do a little bit of a chin to kind of make it a little bit of a point. So the thing with the contour is it always looks like you're like a tiger, like you kind of just did like all these lines on your face and it looks insane. But it's always about putting the dark color on and then blending it out. So these brushes are really easy to use. Um, you can also use the one that I used before, the Kabuki brush, but these kind of oval brushes are really easy for people to use. So if you're kind of unsure of doing something like contour, this, this makes it much easier. Uh, I just sort of gently, I'm not pressing very hard at all. Big thing with this is you don't wanna press really hard because you're gonna take off all the makeup you just did. And then you sort of gently, guided along the line. And I'm blending this down, but not up because this is gonna be my highlight. So the thing with the cream contour is it gives you a really nice base to then put the powder on top of. At this point, it's still okay if you can kind of see lines. Um, I definitely want it to look really nice and shadowed. Jessica, did you have, Do you a, have a larger forehead? 
I was gonna say, if you have a larger forehead than me, you can kind of go across the top as well. But like I said, you want it to look like uh, as if it was like a skeleton. Yeah, that was there a question. Can I ask a really quick question? <clears throat> yeah. What can I do uh, to prevent the the makeup, any makeup, foundation or or concealer or even powder, to not go and settle into the creases under my eyes? So that's that a makes big thing me when look it comes so much it, older. It's, yeah, it's the amount of product that you're using and the consistency. So a big thing that I notice, and this is something that I've had to yell at my mom over and over again. Um, <laughs> she always puts so much concealer under her eye. And I'm like, mom, you keep watching these videos of 19 year old girls who are putting a pound of um, concealer under their eye, then taking a wet beauty blender with a bunch of powder and baking it. You know how like um, they, they call like, oh, I'm baking my makeup. So that is a technique, especially, I think the technique was like started by drag queens to like create this like flawless kind of under eye, but that kind of technique, it's gonna sit into all of your wrinkles. I'm 31 yes. and I can't do that anymore because it sits into all those little baby wrinkles. So you need a liquidy kind of concealer. So not something that's gonna be super, super thick and you wanna put a tiny amount in. So anything that involves like that, so that's why like today I'm not doing it under my eye, but normally I put a very small amount of concealer, I blend it, and then I do like a little bit of loose powder with a brush. I don't like set it in and bake it. Otherwise you're gonna see all those. So that's a big yeah, thing Yeah, that's what I, you, I, in general, if I'm not trying to look my best, I try and, I only just use a, a loose powder with a brush. But when I, maybe I'm just using too much, um, cause I have, yeah, I would say it. I would say it's the amount, but it also could just be the consistency. So definitely, like, play with the consistency. Okay. Yeah, because I have narcolepsy, so I have a lot of puffiness and wrinkles under my eyes. So whenever I do that, I was like, yeah, oh, crap. yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely play around with some other products and see if maybe it's the product okay. that you're using. Um, so see, I see how the that line still going. Um, I'm gonna set this. So this is what I was saying about setting it. I have a so quick this will be long lasting. This will also. Yeah, uh, I'm a little bit late starting because I couldn't find my makeup and it's a little bit, it don't, it's not so clear uh, in the camera. Could you just like point around your face where the highlights are? Highlights are right here, kind of in this like weird, like right at where okay. you would normally put blush. It's like right here. It's right along the top of your brow okay. and then the center cool. of your Thank chin. You. So we're not highlighting our nose because we're right. going to be essentially creating negative space for our nose. Uh, we're not highlighting our under eye because we're going to make like a punched out black dye. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so it's in this like this spot right along the top of your brow and the center of your chin. So now I'm going to be taking this is Derma Blend. It's a loose powder. This stuff is really great. They have it in white and they have it in yellow. Um, I put some on one of these like kind of cotton uh, rounds. And this is where I'm just going to set the areas where I put this highlight. And this will keep it still for as long as I want. And the powder kind of goes everywhere, which is really fun. <laughs> and then when I want to set the rest of my face, I'm going to use a brush so I don't have to have like this sort of packed in powder look. Can I have a quick, quick, quick question? Yeah, go. Hi, I'm uh, from the Netherlands, so my English is a little wonky every now and then. So um, we do okay. LARP a lot and we use a lot of monster makeup and special effects, etc. The mm -hmm. only problem we have is keeping the eyelids uh, in color. So uh, can you use a primer for that or something? Yes. Um, I will tell you my absolute favorite. So see how insane I look? You let this kind of sit for a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, this is P. Louise. They're based in England. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called P. Louise Base. And they mm -hmm. have it in like six or seven colors. I have five of the colors. They are incredible. You just put like a tiny bit on your finger all over your eye um, eyelid and they create a really nice base. Uh, and then in addition to that, they also have a product that's called base. Uh -huh. And I also have that. I don't think I can find it. There it is. Victoria, um, can you spell the name of that pro that brand name for me? I, I it's P dot P dot L O U I S E P Louise. Um, and they also have this one called blank canvas. This is how I do a cut crease. So anyone mm -hmm. that wants to try out cut creases, this is how you do that. Like cut into the color. This stuff is amazing. It's really thick. You don't need a lot of it. That's awesome. Thank you. Right, so now I'm going to take a fluffy brush 
And I'm just gonna go back into that same powder and I'm just gonna set a little bit, the cream powder that the creams that I did, just so I can put powders on top of it without it making a mess on me and with, so it can blend really well. Okay, just a little bit, don't need a ton. Okay, so now I'm going to do a powder color that's gonna be my contour, like on top of the cream that I just did. So this is Pat McGrath. This is a Mothership, which one? I forget which one it is. It's one of the Motherships. Uh, this is like a dark ashy brown, and then there's a slightly lighter one next to it. So I'm gonna kind of go be between those two colors to create more of this contoured shadow look. You can use a brush like this. Uh, and you can also use like a smaller one, depending on how comfortable you feel adding this kind of color. Uh, so I do the lighter color first and I kind of pack on the color and then I just like knock it off a little bit so it's not too much. And then I go along that line and I gently blend it down. I'm barely touching the skin. So it's all about blending it very, very gently. And then I'll use a fluffier brush to blend that even more. Would you mind showing the color again in your palette? Yeah. So I've got these two colors. I'm doing this one first, and then I'm gonna go into the darker one. Um, again, I feel like I, it was on here at some point. It's Mothership. I don't know which one it is. <laughs> it doesn't say on it which one it is, which is frustrating. Uh, but there's like seven Mothership palettes, so that's why I wanted to be able to say which one it was. And Again, just sort of gently blend this down a little bit. And then I'm gonna take the one I use for the um, loose powder and I'm gonna blend this down. And again, I'm very, very lightly pressing in really nice smooth motions and staying along the same line. So see, I already look, I have sunken in cheeks. I'm actually gonna bring that down a little bit more. Hi, I have a question for you. Yeah. I'm also a makeup artist. I'm from Mexico City, actually. But nice. here, um, <laughs> thank you. Here, like, where you're mostly, like, specialized in event makeup, like, for nighttime or weddings and stuff like that, that's what I'm mostly used to. But, like, I've never tried, I want to actually venture into TV and special effects. So okay. I was wondering uh, what you recommend <laughs> for me if I want to start like venturing into that area. Well, the first thing that I needed to delve into and practice, and I feel that really was like a big thing for me to try to get used to was latex. Latex is one of those things, like it takes a while of playing with it to feel comfortable mm -hmm. doing it. It is very finicky. So I would say simple looks that you can use latex you can mix latex and flour and create like a sort of a um like you can create okay, little right. pieces like almost like little mini prosthetic pieces uh -huh. um i did i don't know if any of you guys saw so this was like four years ago or something i did um two face on rob benedict we did like half his face covered in that was literally all those pieces like the muscles and all the little like janky like burned flesh kind of sticking off of his face were all using just latex and flour i mix it in a bowl and created like this pasty kind of stuff and then created little um, like pieces on wax paper and let them dry over a couple of days. And then I use latex to glue those on. So he had like a bald cap on half his head and I just like glued them on all over and then used a simple, a simple like sponge to apply the latex. And it's really, I feel like burns is probably the first like thing to learn with latex. So you can kind of get used to the material. Um, and then you can kind of build up your repertoire of different kinds of prosthetics and blood and uh, scar wax is really good to play with and learn. Um, that one can be also pretty finicky. Uh, so now I'm gonna go into this darker color. Um, so yeah, I would say those two were like the first things that I really wanted to learn how to do. Thank you. And what about like when, you know, in TV makeup, like you have to make it look like very natural because mm -hmm. like for like the actors who look like they have like literally no makeup, so like, what do you do so it doesn't like translate too much on TV? Because I know like with the lighting and stuff, they can't. Yeah, I mean, it's all about, it's all about minimalism. Like it's always less than you think. Um, in terms of like skin, I usually do like the most um, like uh, sort of skin finish. I don't do super matte. I don't do like um, 
really like I don't do cream contour I'll do like a liquid bronzer or like, like a liquid blush and you just put like a tiny bit on your hand uh you do like really uh for the most part I do like really um lightweight foundations so it's all about making sure that you're not putting a ton of product on uh, it's always like a little bit of time, a little bit at a time. Um, and then same with like eyeshadow, like you don't want to be doing like a cut crease. You don't want to be doing a really extreme, like uh, multifaceted eyeshadow. You kind of want to keep it simple and just do like an eye contour essentially. So that's, that's like the biggest thing that I think I had to learn was like, oh, I can't do my makeup as the way that I want to do my makeup. I want to do it very, very minimal. Hey, Victoria, we have a we have a question real quick from someone in the yeah. Q&A here um, for people of color and, and darker toned skins. Are there any other tips you can do for the contouring on that side for this kind of makeup? Yeah, I mean, you definitely just like I mean, you want to just go like four shades darker than your shade. So um, I have a couple of friends who when I was doing contour, they were like um, grabbing the same contour color as me. And I'm like, I am 15 shades lighter than you. You cannot get the same contour color as me. You have to get a darker contour color. So you got to find companies that are going to have the color that, that you need. So you're unfortunately going to have to shop around more because most companies are not as, you know, progressive and have the right amount of colors, but you want to have the palette that is suitable for your skin tone. I have actually if I can find it really quickly I have Ben Nye I have one of their uh like contour wheels and they have I think like that is their darkest color it's like basically like a very very close shade to black but it's not it's not cool toned it's a warm tone like really dark brown um you could do something like that um I think that would like show up really well um, and it would definitely like give you that negative space. And you can also highlight much lighter if you want to. You can do like a very pale kind of orangey, like almost highlight with that and mix it with like a, like a foundation of yours to really brighten up your highlight. And that would make the contour seem more uh, visible. Okay, so with this kind of like corner here, I'm sort of doing these like forward motions like this to sort of make it seem like this shadow is a little bit of this rounded skeletal head um hi i i have a quick yeah. question yeah. so um when you're using like uh special effects like wax like um like like something like this is there any like powder that you should put on like after you put on the wax because i find it kind of hard to put like eyeshadow over it when i'm trying to make it look like bruised because it just gets on the brush and then it sticks to it yeah. Um, well, each of the different products will have a different kind of sealant. Uh, they're like Meron, M-E-H-R-O-N is my favorite, them and Ben Nye, but I think Meron is better. Uh, they're my favorite for special effects, um, sort of beginner stuff. Uh, they have a scar wax and then they have like a, a sealant essentially. It's like, you can use latex to seal it, but latex is a little bit more finicky, you're gonna end up with more of that like kind of stipply kind of, it's not gonna be as smooth if you want it to be very smooth. So a, um, a sealant, I forget what the one that I use is called, but it, it's, it makes it a little bit more, um, like easily you can put foundation on it and stuff like that. So now I'm gonna brush off the little powder that I had put there. I have a question. Yeah. Um, what if you draw your contour line and it looks like it's in the totally wrong place? Like, how do you fix it? Uh, concealer can help. Concealer can definitely help if you don't want to like take it off. Um, but I'm just going to do a little bit this thing here this way. Um, and I mean, you can basically, this can be highlighted with that loose powder again. So if it does go a little bit off, you can kind of go back onto it. But if it's still feeling like it's not giving you the right, um, placement, I would go back in with concealer. So I'm putting a little bit of both those two colors again on this fluffy brush and gently contouring just a little bit in here because I'm going to be putting my teeth right along here. I did that with Maleficent. I put my cheekbones up here <laughs> instead of here. It's not a good look. Um, and then, all right, so I'm going to do the teeth with like a light, light contour. So I'm gonna use a concealer again and basically map out where my teeth are gonna be. You can use like a white um, 
paint if you want to do your teeth that way. I'm just going to basically do like little concealer teeth and then I'm just going to blend them. So I'm going to go out all the way to where my contour is and I'm just doing little things like that. Camila, did you have a question? My daughter had a question. Yeah. Um, I saw on TikTok a person that said you could mix Vaseline and flour together to get that. Scar wax. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a way to make scar wax as well. It, it is a little bit difficult of a consistency to create. You have to be very patient um, because it, if you have like a little bit too much of one or a little bit too much of the other, the consistency will be off. So you kind of have to know the consistency you're looking for. But once you are comfortable with that, you'll kind of know how to uh, get that consistency and then you'll be fine with it. I'm just gonna add a little bit more here because I went over. Um, yeah, so that is definitely something you can do to create um, a similar scar wax kind of material, yes. Um, so petroleum jelly or Vaseline uh, can work for that for sure. All right, and then I'm going to use a very, very small brush. I'm gonna use this little, well, no, sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna use a different one. I'm gonna use this one because it has a bit of a flat edge to it. And I'm gonna go into a black. So I have this um, Anastasia Soft Glam palette and there's a black called Noir. And I'm going to shadow between my teeth. So I'm gonna do a little inner shadow around my lips in the center. And then I'm gonna bring this out to my contour. So we're creating kind of like that. And then I'm going to shadow between my teeth. Uh, Victoria, you are you are hustling right now. Uh, so you can keep going. I was going to put out the, the GISH challenge while people are here uh, and you can kind of catch up. You've been answering a ton of questions. So uh, <laughs> give you a minute to do to work on to work on your your artistry yeah. there. Um, so I wanted to share with everyone the uh, GISH challenge. I'm going to spotlight for everyone Berto as well so that we get um, uh, him in there instead of me. Let me just share out this GISH item description. All right, your challenge, which we will be updating in the list shortly, is an image. The only difference between monsters and non-monsters is society's tired standard of stereotypical beauty. And it's time we retire this expectation of physical beauty. Make an Instagram grid of at least six images showing hashtag horrifying beauty looks of lovely monsters using makeup skills you learned here. You can use makeup, non-toxic skin safe paint, or to paraphrase that gishers do, food slash condiments or whatever's within your claws reach to achieve your looks. Uh, also, I wanna do a quick shout out to Victoria's social here, Vic underscore right hand on Twitter and at Vic right hand on uh, uh, Instagram. So uh, where are we at in the process now, Victoria? Uh, so we've got the teeth done. So we kind of look mm -hmm. skeletal. I just want to do some dark eyes and then we'll be good. Uh, are, we, are we going too far over on time? So I think that's good. And then you can kind of just keep building up a little darker if you want to, but that is- You're muted, Charlie. Yes, I am. Uh, yes, yeah, we have plenty of time. Uh, please take your time. And I'm actually just fascinated just watching because I don't know how to do this at all. And I'm <laughs> upset about it, as you can tell. So I'm just down for that. So we can, um, I can, I can shoot you some more questions from the Q and A if yeah. that's helpful. Yeah, um, that's great. Awesome. So we've got, let's see. A lot of questions about recommendations on kits and products. So we'll uh, get those yeah, from you and post those I've somewhere as well. I have a ton of products. So I'm happy yeah. to answer lots of questions about products. Well, and also definitely go follow Victoria too, because uh, you know you can ask those questions in the comments there. Um, we've got one, you know, one question for you that's not 
technique related is what inspired you to, uh, Gabrielle Lopez says, not related to makeup, but I'm curious, when you first got into makeup, what inspired you to, to do that? Um, uh, it's a little unconventional. So I was, a, I was a painter. I was just doing painting as like a hobby. I was like, this is not a career for me when I was in high school. And um, uh, while I'm doing this, uh, answering this question, I'm gonna go into that same dark contour color and I'm gonna be going on my eyes. So I'm just gonna show you again, this color, and I'm gonna be going onto my eyes. You guys can follow along. Um, actually, you know what? First, I'm gonna go into this. This is Denisa Myrick's Color Fix. Uh, they're like these matte colors and they're liquid and they're really easy to apply and super fun for creating like a really dark eyeshadow. So I'm actually gonna do that first. Uh, so I had never done makeup till I was like 22. Didn't wear a single thing except maybe eyeliner. Um, and my roommate at the time had gotten a bunch of free makeup. She was really into Halloween. So we went to Six Flags to go to like a zombie walk. And she was like, we should dress up and like, you know, make ourselves into zombies. And I had never done anything like that. And it was so much fun. We were in her car and it was like a hundred degrees outside. And we made ourselves into zombies and then went back into the park. And they almost didn't let us in because they were like, you're only supposed to be dressed up if you work here. And we were like, but you're, it's Halloween. It's a zombie like theme. And they were like, okay, fine, just don't tell people that you work here. So we got to go in the zombie parade that we're all employees. And then we just like hung out and walked around. So I'm gonna take like a little brush I'm gonna blend this with. So there's something like this. Um, and we were the only people who were dressed up as zombies at the park who were allowed to just, you know, take pictures with people um, and essentially just like enjoy ourselves whereas all the employees had to be in character so we had a line of like a hundred people just coming up to us and taking photos with us so we couldn't actually go on rides or anything because we kept getting stopped and I was like um this is the first time I've ever done makeup and we got like asked by this photographer she could like shoot us by the they had like a blood fountain so I got all these professional photos of like the makeup we did afterwards so it was just kind of a really great first experience. And I was like, maybe there's something here. So I just started playing at home and it just became like something I fell in love with. And I prefer people as canvases than paper now. So, yeah. So I'm essentially yeah. really applying this in the inner corner the most because it kind of gives you that like sunken in eye look. And I'm really just blending out this black cream color to get a really nice base so that the eyeshadow can stick on it well. So you can do this with an eyeshadow primer, but if you're going for black, might as well use the same color so that it really gives it that like really strong pigment. And I'm blending it up into my eyebrow a little bit because I'm gonna create some sinister eyebrows. I feel like sinister eyebrows is like a hipster band from the <laughs> early 1990s. Well, it's um, always funny because like I, I have these like natural lines that I can create. And so I always use them as lines to draw on so that I can kind of look like I need to look. Yeah. Like, yeah, I, I use weird stuff on my face. I like, I feel like one of my eyes is constantly closing more than the other one these days because I'm so tired. So I was, <laughs> no. I was thinking, is there a makeup tip for that? I don't know. That, sorry, that's not your main. Just to create, whatsoever. just to create open eyes. Like, like basically, yeah. just, you know what you should do? You should get uh, uh, open eyes tattooed on your eyelid. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. I'm going to grab that noir again. <laughs> and I'm going to use that fl same fluffy brush just because we're going to make some large large black eyes so we don't need to be super picky about how close we're not we're not creating like a perfect wing or anything so we're going to be a little bit messy for fun um we had a, we had a question actually that's not it's somebody has a question because they were asking whether they need to do the makeup right now for the gish item because they're dressed up as quote freddie mercury for ruth connell's show later uh oh. no you can do this later uh please be dressed up as freddie mercury for all of our sakes at, at yes. go to Ruth's panel. Uh, and a reminder that Ruth Ruth is going to be giving out uh, a GISH uh, item deliverable today. I believe it's a 2 p.m. today Pacific, which is in um, roughly an hour and a half. Uh, her stage it. You can also, if uh, you don't have uh, money to join, you can always hit, quote, hitch a ride and other people can help you out get in there too. And that supports Ruth and the, the work that she's doing as well. So that'll be a lot of fun at uh, two o'clock Pacific today. That's awesome. Uh, I love Ruthie. 
I know. Uh, so a big thing with um, applying that eyeshadow over the cream is you want to pat it on. Uh, and every time you put a little bit of product on something, you kind of like blow on it or knock it off on something. So you don't have too much. You don't have to fall out all over your face. This one, it doesn't really matter as much, but if you're going for a normal eyeshadow look, it'll help you a lot. So you don't end up with fallout all over your face, which is why I do my eyeshadow before I do my face most of the time so that I don't have to deal with fallout. So I'm creating a little bit of this like funny looking like 20s shape. And then I'm gonna blend a bit of brown to sort of wing this out a tiny bit. And just so it's a little bit of like a glam skeleton. One person asked uh, about like hot tips on uh, making bruising. Do you have any thoughts about bruising? Oh yeah. Techniques for that? A big thing I feel like I always see with bruising is too much. So if you look at photos of real bruises, there is a lot of this variation in color, um, but there's this thing that they call like an undertone because obviously the bruise is underneath the skin. So you don't want to just pat on a bunch of colors on top of your skin that look really vibrant. You want them to look like they're underneath the skin. So it's a matter of just like a very small amount of color. And then you can kind of do these washes of like foundation or like a, a like a liquid on top of it to sort of make it seem like it really is underneath your skin. And then also really look at the shape of how you're doing your bruise. Uh, it's not gonna like start here and then blend out perfectly. It's gonna have a little bit of blotchiness, like stippled um, sponges are really helpful for that. Um, I'm gonna go back into this brush and grab a lighter brown. So I'm gonna go back into this brown. Um, yeah, so I think for my experience of what I've seen a lot, um, it's generally trying to get the shape of it well. So you can do like, you know how if you get like a bruise from like a um, corner of a table, it'll have like this sort of centered spot where it has a little bit of a line. And then there'll be a gap where you kind of don't see any color change. And then there'll be something that's like kind of purpley at the other end. A big thing too is bruises heal in different color stages. So if you want it to be like a bruise you just got versus a bruise that's two weeks ago, it's gonna be very different colors. So if you just plot on like green, purple, blue, uh, red, pink, and all those colors in the same bruise, it's gonna, and they're all in the same spot, it's not gonna look real. So you really wanna have like the purple, blue, red, um, as like the immediate kind of color with maybe like a tint of green, but as it gets way further on, you're going to want more of those greens and yellows. Okay. So I'm going to just kind of go along the line of the black and blend out really gently with this brown. So we kind of have a softer edge to it. And you can kind of take your top of your cheekbone there and make a little bit of this way and go out but I don't want to I don't want to cover in this area because I'm going to be making some eyebrows that we want to see I'm trying to keep it also like minimal amount of brushes like you don't need you know a thousand brushes like I have uh to be able to do a look like this you can use like I've been using about three different colors and about four or five different brushes. So you can definitely play around with stuff like this without having too many products. You always blend longer than you think you need to, so just keep going. Take your time. I mean, I, look, I caked mine on just now. It's, it's just too much. <laughs> um, uh, Holly asked, are there any products you'd recommend for kiddos learning how to play with this kind of thing? Uh, her daughter is 10 and loves this kind of stuff. Yeah, um, I think for me personally, NYX is kind of a, I mean, for any age, but also just for someone who wants to play with lots of different kinds of products. They have a wide variety of products now. They've expanded their pro collection. Uh, they're cruelty-free, they're vegan, they're really affordable. They're not gonna have the most pigmented products, but as you get used to learning with products like that, you can start to replace individual pieces in your kit so that you have, you know, the pigments that you're looking for. Companies that I've mentioned, like Denisa Myricks, Pat McGrath, Anastasia Beverly Hills, they're amazing, uh, but they are on the higher end. They're not, you know, Lancome kind of price, but they're still pretty high, um, but their pigments are incredible. So it's just a matter of 
kind of working your way up. I, I only bought Pat McGrath palette like last year because, you know, they're like $120 for an eyeshadow palette, but the pigments are incredible and the, and the pots are really big. So you get a lot of products. Um, Morphe brushes also, they have a decent amount of variety of products for a pretty affo affordable price. Um, if you want to go into special effects, um, I would say Meron, they have a lot of smaller pieces that you can buy like the smaller size. Like this is Ben Nye's liquid latex. They have this and I think three different sizes. This is like a medium size as four ounces. This is $13. So you can buy just that and start to learn how to use a product like that. And then, you know, when you start doing more and more, it, it takes a long time to go through that small thing. So you don't need to spend a ton and have, a, you know, an entire $200 kit to start with. So, yeah, but like stuff like this, like I did this all with my beauty makeup stuff. So you don't have to go into the really expensive um, kind of special effects kind of kits to start doing stuff like this. Um, okay, so now you can grab a either an eyeliner if you have something really thin, um, a brow pencil, or for me, I'm gonna use this dip brow from Anastasia. It's like a cream that I use for my eyebrows, but I'm gonna create a couple of fun, like angry lines on my forehead. So I'm gonna grab this. This is a Makeup Forever brush, which I feel like is the best eyeliner brush that I've been able to find. Um, and I'm gonna really saturate it into this eyebrow color, which is just like a dark brown. And I'm going to make this kind of face <laughs> and create these like kind of forehead creases. So I'm gonna go from the inner corner where I'm blending it into that black, and then I'm gonna sort of flick it up. And then same on this side. So they don't have to be perfectly even, but we wanna kind of make them like a little, like one a little bit higher than the other. And then I can always go back in. That's a nice thing about the gels is you can always go back in and add more pigment. And bring it up a little bit like that. And then we're gonna blend it. So then I'm gonna take that first brush that I used for the black again, which is a little bit smaller, so I used my teeth. And I'm going to blend the corner in here out a little bit. So it creates a little bit of that shadow there. And then you're gonna do that on the other side, but just at the bottom, instead of making them perfectly even, I wanna make them a little different. And then I'm also going to create a little one that goes this way, kind of like that. And then again, you go in and blend a little bit. It's always good with these kinds of lines to blend them and to make them look like shadows. If you just create lines, it looks a little cartoonish. And then I'll take a brush that has like nothing on it and do a little extra blending. So this will really make it look a little bit more like a shadow. Obviously it's not gonna be super realistic either way, but <laughs> it'll look a little bit more dynamic. And now I'm gonna do my brows where I'm just gonna make them a bit darker than my natural brows. My natural brows are kind of non-existent. So I'm just going to make a couple of lines here to blend this in a little bit to the eyeshadow. And then I'm gonna take an eyebrow pencil that's actually designed for eyebrows. So this has like a little angle to it. And I'm gonna go back into that same color and just fill in my eyebrows a little bit. If anybody has more questions, please feel free to ask. Yeah, Big thing with, um, yeah, go ahead. No, just, uh, uh, we've got, I mean, I, we've got a lot of questions about uh, sensitive skin and allergies, like latex allergies and things like that. Is there yeah. anything that you need to look for when you find the products that you need for those kinds of things? Any Anything you recommend? Well, I mean, uh, for the most part, so I have really sensitive skin. I actually have rosacea. So I do have a lot of issues with a lot of products. Unfortunately, I don't know. I'm not, I don't have latex allergies. So for that, I don't know the best replacement. Um, I know that there are some out there, but I have not tested them myself. Um, but in terms of like sensitive skin and testing out products that, you know, are for sensitive skin, um, a big thing is how you prep and how you take care of your skin beforehand, how you remove your makeup. Um, you know, I just, uh, 
Charlie was saying earlier, I just got my license in skincare. And that was a big thing for me for a long time that I just felt like I was constantly destroying my skin because every time I put makeup on, I would have uh, like skin reactions. I would get really red. I used to get, I used to get hives from paint. So um, a big thing for me is just learning how to test the product. I would test a bit on my skin, on my neck. Um, I put a lot of stuff on my skin beforehand to sort of prep and, and hydrate, but also protect my skin. Um, I use higher quality paints. So I use the paints from Meron, which I've not, they've, they're water safe. You can eat them. They're really uh, safe for your skin. So they're probably on the better side in terms of like the stuff you get at Spirit Halloween or Party City. Like I'm not, you know, saying everything there is bad. It's just sometimes if you spend 99 cents on a paint, it's not going to be, um, it's going to have some other stuff in it. Wherever it's packaged, that can also affect if there's, you know, products that have a lot of stuff that get in them and they don't have, you know, they're not super safe. Um, so I do a bit of research now where I'm, you know, looking for things that are uh, going to have a list of their ingredients, if there's anything I know of. Um, and same with just like sensitive skin. Like I, I, I test it out. I do a lot of like on my arm or my neck testing things. So those are, those are like the big ways that I kind of check. Um, if they're like a reputable distributor, if they're coming from China, that's a big thing too. Like, especially for me, if it comes from China, they legally have to test on animals to be able to produce products in China uh, to sell there. So I've stopped for the most part promoting and buying products from companies that sell in China because I don't like promoting that. But also a lot of the time I watched this documentary on Netflix about where makeup is coming from and how they're being you know, packaged and produced. And some of the places they don't have the same regulations and they don't have, you know, that kind of oversight to pay attention to where and how the facilities are. So uh, one of the companies that they did on the other end for the US was ColourPop and they showed the facility, they showed how clean they are, how much they take care of their products and how their sanitation is like. So uh, that's a big thing also, just in terms of taking care of your skin, but in terms of allergies, for sure, like some companies will advertise that they're sensitive skin and they might not be, so. Yeah. Well, we're we're kind of running out of time at this point. We've got, uh, we've got, this is incredible though. This is like such good information. I, the stuff is, I've never, I don't know how to do this and this is amazing and I appreciate the time. Um, voilà. <laughs> again, we, we've, you look, I mean, you look fantastic. You're, you're ready <laughs> to, to go out there and uh, I mean, this is such a weird time for Halloween. Usually we're all getting together and mm -hmm. we're eating all the candy in the world with our friends and family or, you know, doing something. But uh, this is great. Even just to do at home by yourself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> such a fun time. Yeah. Makes it a fun um, Halloween now. Just paint Yeah, yourself. exactly. We got we to gotta do a little extra, right? We got to do something to kind of, you know, if we have some restrictions here, we got to have some fun activities. So this is, and this is a great one. Um, we'll get the products that you've talked about uh, from you and then and put those out there and again uh, make sure you're following Victoria on social media uh, which we put up before we've also linked it um, but the the task is now in the list so go check out the list for the task description um, and we look forward to seeing <clears throat> all of your lovely um, horrifying beauty imagery um, thank you Victoria Thanks for having me. This was fun. Yeah. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. <laughs> well, good. I'm glad. And I think people have really, I mean, a lot of people have stuck around to, to get all the, the, the tips and info, but if you have questions for Victoria, please go to her social media and bombard her. She loves being bombarded <laughs> by comments um, and questions. My favorite thing. <laughs> yeah, totally. Everyone, it's everyone's favorite thing. Um, uh -huh. <laughs> please, we're, uh, and everyone watching, uh, our next panel will be at 3.30 PM Pacific, 6.30 Eastern. We will be doing scary yoga and costume party uh, led by uh, a good friend of Gish, uh, a longtime friend of Misha and Philip, Rachel Grant Jackson. She's going to be uh, doing some really accessible yoga while everyone is dressed up in Halloween costumes. So if you're going to Ruth's Stage It event, for example, then come on over to Scary Yoga. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we want to see those costumes and uh, it's uh, we're really excited for that as well. Thanks, everybody. Thank you again, Victoria. Awesome. Thank you so much. Bye guys. Happy thanks, Halloween. Thanks, <laughs> thanks to our transcriptionist and thank you to uh, to Berto here, our interpreter. Bye.